Praise the Lord for this wonderful day and for the grace that we have to be again in the house of the Lord. Amen. Looking at this wonderful passage, the gospel according to Isaiah, prophesied hundreds of years before it happened, unlike those four gospels that we have in the New Testament, we can definitely believe and hope and see that there is hope for the lost, there is hope of salvation. Hallelujah. Because God the Father planned the salvation and the Son paid and purchased us and the Holy Spirit is going to preserve us until the end. Thank him for that. Looking at this passage, we shall see how the servant of the Lord came on earth, how he lived and what he's been through. No wonder why Isaiah starts with this question, who believed our testimony? Who knew the hand of God, how God the Father is going to work the salvation in the world? After I talked to a Jew, I just like to start conversation with people. I saw the, a Jew who had a little cover on his head, so I, I knew he was from Israel. So I started with him with the very well-known passage, Isaiah 53. Just like, you know, Ethiopian eunuch was reading from Isaiah 53. And so he didn't believe it. So after I talked to him and I tried to convince him that it's not about Jacob of the suffering of Israel, but it's about our Lord Jesus Christ who takes the sin of the world upon him, something that is not related to Jacob, to Israel. Then I figured, no wonder why Isaiah started with this question, because the Jew, even today at large, they do not believe. The world does not believe. Even the prophets do not understand. Even the disciples do not understand. Because remember, Matthew chapter 16, verse 22, when Jesus tells his disciples that he's going to have to suffer, and then he's going to have to be crucified, Peter, Matthew 16, 22, takes Jesus aside and starts rebuking him. He said, God forbid this should not happen to you. And the Lord Jesus turned to him and said, get behind me, Satan. The world didn't believe it. The prophets, even the disciples did not understand it until it happened. And then even the devil tried to stop him. Through Hero tried to kill his, when he got, was born. Through people that hated him in John, uh, Gospel of John, we have twice they tried to stone him. Once they tried to throw him off the cliff. But through all this, Jesus fulfilled the plan of God all the way until the end. And there is an application for us today through all that we're going to hear and see in this passage. The most important thing is to remember what Jesus has done for us and on our behalf. Let's be grateful to him and let's thank him for this. Amen. No beauty. He grew up like a tender plant, like a root out of dry ground, not handsome like Samson or like Absalom. No beautiful face like the scripture says about David. Some people in scripture says have a beautiful face. He that created billions of people, Jesus Christ, the creator. He could have chose the most beautiful face that will attract our eyes. But he didn't do so. He said, no beauty. Just an average man. An average Jew. We know from the scripture that he had beard. He looked like a Jew. And by the way, no Christian, no follower of Jesus should be anti-Semite, no anti-Jew. Doesn't matter how the Jews are, doesn't matter if, uh, what they do and if they believe in God or not, we should pray for them. But let's not forget that we gave our life and we made a lifelong covenant with a Jew. The salvation comes from the Jew and Jesus was a Jew. And because of him, we should pray to God for their salvation so they may believe along with us. Yes, I understand it has to be from the house of David, tribe of Judah. But he could have, he's the only one that chose where to be born, what family. He knew all along all the circumstances. He knew that he's going to be born in a stable. I understand it has to be from the house of David, but he could have chosen a, an offspring of David, a king like Ezekiel. Josiah, Jehoshaphat, God-fearing kings that followed David and his footsteps. They were faithful and large. And he could have chose to be born in one of those families and in the palace. No, he chose this humble way, this poor family, Joseph and Mary, to be born in Bethlehem. He chose that life of meekness and humble. Therefore, we have to follow Jesus. We should have the same mind of Christ like it was in Christ Jesus. 
Even though he was a son of God, he didn't take it lightly to be a son of God. He humbled himself, Philippians chapter 2. And he became a man like us. We need to be humble in our lives. We need to be looking at learning from Jesus and not to spend so much time and money on our outside appearance to determine people to look at us and to impress what the eyes of flesh can see. Jesus did not try to impress and to get our eyes to look upon him, these physical eyes, but he rather tried to turn our hearts to God the Father and his humble life that he lived. He rather impressed us to his teachings and his life and what he did on earth. This should be our example. We know that James and Apostle Peter says that God stands against the proud but gives grace to the humble. And God resists the proud but helps the humble. We need so much. We depend on God. We need his grace. We need his help. Therefore, we should learn from Jesus Christ. Don't try to impress anyone else around you how you look. It's the grace of God how you look. He chose that face for you. He chose that you will be born in a Romanian family or wherever you're born. He chose your parents. He chose for himself and he chose for you. Look at him and learn from him. Let us have this mindset that it was in Jesus Christ. Submission and live a humble life because we need his grace. Oh, we need God's grace and his help these days that we live in. Therefore, we should gather our families and pray and make the right decision, ask light from the Lord. Second thing that the scripture says, not only he learned, he chose to be humble, he learned obedience. Hebrews 5, Verse 8, he learned obedience even though he suffered. Obedience to suffer. Asculta, învăța să asculte prin lucrurile pe care le-a suferit. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, and not any kind of death, not a quick death, but death on the cross, excruciating death and pain. Because once you were sentenced by the Romans, you're supposed to die and be tortured. Unlike in many cases today, well, if, you're, if you die anyways, we're going to be nice with you. If you have pain, we'll give you morphine. Not like that happened with Jesus. The most excruciating pains that they could deliver to those who were sentenced. And that's what Jesus has been through. We have to learn. He learned obedience. We have the impression, that, okay, I have to die. I'll do it. Oh, it's fine. Our flesh is not going to lean us that way. We have to learn to obey. We have to learn to love God. We have to learn to love our neighbors as ourselves. Because we do take care of ourselves. We have to learn how to forgive. And yes, we have to learn how to suffer when suffering is coming, the next step. The first thing that I, we, we see here, and we can highlight this, humbleness of Jesus. His meekness. I remember his performing the greatest miracle, we can, we can call it the raising of Lazarus from the dead. And I see this in Jesus in all his days and all through his life, a self-control, knowing who he is, where he came from, what he can do, and abstinence, resuming to only what God the Father wanted him to do, not more than that, not impressing anyone else with something else other than what the Father wanted him to do. Imagine him standing at the tomb of Lazarus. He could have just rolled a stone away he tells people to do it. They can do it. Imagine Jesus standing there and knowing that in one day with one shout, every billion of people that lived on this earth will come out in a glorified body. He's standing there in a cemetery, limited him, limiting his power to only what God the Father wanted him to do. And not calling everyone to come out. He could have. Just Lazarus come out. And come out only in the human body that he later died again. His call, his cry, come out, raise him, not only gave life into his body, but raise him as he was laying down, wrapped all the way from top, from head to toe. He couldn't walk. His power brought him up, right out, standing outside. 
he could have get his clothing unwrapped, then tells people again, unwrap him. Only I see this abstinence and limit of Jesus because of his glory that he had and what he could do. But he's humble and meek and does only what the Father wanted him to do. Let us learn from him. And then he suffered. He's despised and rejected, verse 3. Despised and rejected. If the world loves me, there is a problem. If I love the world, there is a bigger problem. The love of the Father is not in me. Let's learn, brothers and sisters, to be separated from the world. We live such a tough times that I'm saying more loudly, blessed are the Amish and the Mennonites, because they are very little affected by what's going on in the world. Let's watch on our life and on our hearts and on our families. Let's watch upon your, upon your wife and your husband and your children. See how much world there is in us. We have to separate more and more from the world. We got too much implemented and it's going to be hard for many to make tough decisions. Let's be careful. Our soul needs to be saved and preserved all the way until the end. Let's not compromise. Let not the money I decide. The money is not going to dictate how do I live and where do I live. I'm going to make decisions based on the love of Christ that I have in my heart and based on a clear conscience. And the main thing is to be holy until the end, not compromised with the world. Despised and rejected. That's fine. I belong to Jesus. As long as Jesus doesn't reject me, he's pleased with me, I'm fine. Let's not love the world. I hear preachers saying that in the presence of Jesus, everybody felt accepted. Not true, not everybody. Very few. Very few felt accepted. That had a tender heart. The responsibility from God the Father, it's on us, it's on people. The seed has life in itself. It's the same, never changes. The difference makes the heart of people. How is the heart, of, where the seed falls? Whether it's hard or a tender heart. Even women and men that were caught up in sin, they felt accepted because they they, they long for salvation, for a change. They, they love him. They like him. They, they adore him. They wanted a change in their life. They accepted the message of Jesus, the message of the gospel. That's why there is hope for them. That's what makes the difference. How did the Pharisee fail in the presence of Jesus? They felt accepted or rather condemned and rejected because their heart rejected Christ. That's why they fell. Let's look at the Jesus' very own words. What does he say about the world in relation with him? Is it remember, John 7, verse 7. He's telling to his brothers that he grew up with. At that point, they didn't believe in him. But later, after the resurrection, they believed in him. We have James and Judah, brothers of Jesus. He's telling them, the world cannot hate you. It's sad if somebody tells me, the world cannot hate you. Because the world does not hate its own. The world hates those that are different. They don't, don't, don't live like them. So he's telling to his brothers, the world cannot hate you, but the world hates me. Why? Because I testify that its works are evil. Go and preach the gospel. Go and preach the truth. Go on downtown. Go in June when is this evil, disgusting parade. Unlike any other holiday in America, there are holidays one day, there are three days holiday, but they took a month, the whole month. Go and preach the gospel. They're going to spit on you. They're going to hate you because you testify the truth about them. And they reject it, that's why they hate you. And we shall get acquainted with this, to be rejected, despised, and hated, and to suffer because of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's get used to it. Let's learn. Our prayer should not be, Lord, pick me up, pick me up. I want that secret rapture to pick me up. But Lord, give me grace. Give me boldness. Even in the face of death, when Jesus told his disciples that I have to suffer and go to die, When he was, the, uh, John chapter 12, this context again, it's about he has to go and die. And he, he raised up his voice to heaven, to God the Father, and he prays. He says, Father, glorify your name. This should be our prayer. Now, Father, and what do I say if, if death is coming? Jesus said in one, another passage, uh, Father, depart from me. This, this is where I came from, for to die. So in the face of death, he's praying to the Father, glorify your name. If I have to be persecuted, in a way or another, more or less, whether they only mock you or they spank you or they torture you or they kill you, doesn't matter. Father, glorify your name. 
My prayer should not be like a, a coward, like a one that fears and I don't want to die and please don't kill me because I believe in Jesus. Yes, I believe in Jesus. Shame on you. You are the victim of the devil, not me. Father, glorify your name. The servant of the Lord, about whom the fathers testified twice, he's my beloved son, with whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him. Now he testified for the third time. When he said, glorify your name, the Father from heaven with thunder voice said, I glorified it and I will glorify it again. Through this, to what your son is going to go through, spit and tortured, a mockery of the world, through this you're going to glorify your name? Yes. And it will be forever. That never changes. What Christ has done for us is never going to change. Praise the Lord for what he has done for us. Let's learn to be obedient. Let's learn to suffer. And the times that we live in, apocalyptic days, and you've got nothing to lose, brother and sister, if you believe with all your heart, we live the very few last years of this planet. I'm not saying go on a mountain and wait for the rapture. No. But in your heart, it's very close, and you've got nothing to lose if you prepare with all your heart. Amen. What shall I tie my heart with those things that are... I'll leave them, every, every one of them here. Everything will be left. We'll go empty-handed. Let it be heart full of Christ. Acquainted with suffering. 2 Peter 2.8, Lot was tormented. Was tormenting his soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. See, there is a suffering. Yeah, we have the joy of Christ in our heart. But when you see what's around us, it's sufletul. Din pricina nelegiurii care se întâmplă în jurul nostru. Și unii se îndreaptă și legile. Și nu mai au minte. There is no wisdom anymore, I keep saying. Until the world remember me. That's why? Because there is no fear of God anymore. Which is the beginning of wisdom. That's why there is no wisdom anymore. Blessed are those who suffer because of righteousness. Matthew 8. Matthew 5, verse 10. In the Sermon on the Mountain. You are blessed, and I am blessed if we suffer because of righteousness. Pure and simple, you do what's right. And because the world is corrupted, you will suffer. Apostle Paul says, all those who want to live a righteous life will be persecuted. All of them. You cannot be in the world and not be touched by what they do. And then, blessed are those who are persecuted because of my namesake. For the glory of Jesus Christ, just because we bear his name. Humble life, meek, we learn from Jesus. We have to learn to suffer, to obey, to forgive. We have to get acquainted with this. Even though we are rejected and despised by the world Jesus has been through, that's fine. I'll stick with him. May the Lord bless us and give us strength and power when we go through the suffering to be victorious and be a boldness, with boldness, testimony for God. He needs testimony all the way until the last day. And I will be with you every day until the end of the age. And I shall raise him four times, John chapter 6. This is as an encouragement, not a disappointment. You're going to go through tough situation, tough suffering. Do not give up. Don't lose courage because you don't see the rapture of the church coming yet because God needs testimonies all the way until the last day. Yes, even if you have to face the Antichrist, he needs you to be a testimony for him. Don't forget this church. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, be ready until the last day. John 6, verse 39, 40, 44 and 54, four times. But I thought, I learned, somebody said, I'm done with this, I'm left with what Jesus Christ says. He'll raise me in the last day. Thank you, Lord Jesus, come even more. We know this very well, and I'm closing. John 3:16, and it's a very good verse for the world that God gave His Son. Whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. But there is another good verse, especially for the church. First John 3:16, we know love by this. So by this we know love, because He laid down His life for us, and we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Wow! I thought I have to be ready to die for Christ. He's telling us to live for him and be ready to die for a brother and sister. Imagine how much we have to love each other. Just like that in Auschwitz, I told you, somebody stepped forward to die in somebody else's place. The same thing we have to be ready to do, to love each other so much that we're ready to give our lives. In the situation when you know chances are very low to live, be a testimony for others. Lord, give us that courage. And I, as I prayed, and. 
One more quick thing. It's about the suffering. He took upon him our grief, our sorrow, our iniquity, our transgression. Everything that he's been through, I supposed to be through. I deserved it. And therefore, he took all this upon him. To him be the glory and honor for his kingdom. For his namesake, we may live. Not just honoring him with our lips, but honoring him with our lives. But not because it's not he who says, Lord, Lord. Or he who says that I praise you, Lord. Let's praise him with our life. Amen. Let's praise him with our life. Amen. And I remember when Elijah called Elisha. He's passing by him. He throws his mantle and he continues to walk. And Elisha starts running after him. My Lord, let me go back to my prayer and say goodbye. Let me kiss my mother and father and I'll follow you. Go, but remember what I have done to you. Don't forget, să nu uiți am făcut. Dute, go and say goodbye and adios to the world and be ready to follow Jesus. Because God in his mercy throw his mantle of grace in order that we can follow him. Let's do the same in Jesus' name. Amen.